We want to tell you what we know as we know it. But we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. One report said, and we can't confirm any of this, that a plane may have hit one of the two towers of the World Trade Center. But again, you're seeing the live pictures here. We have no further details than that. We don't know anything about what they have concluded happened there this morning. But we're going to find out and, of course, make sure that everybody knows on the air. These are, of course, the two twin Trade Center buildings that are down at the foot of Manhattan, that they really are the beacons of New York. It was there that there was the explosion a couple of years ago uh, brought about by terrorists. We've, that's all gone through the courts. But this, we don't know anything about we don't know about anything that has happened here other than the fact that there's obviously been a major incident there. And we're going to go to a special report now from ABC News. This is an ABC News special report. Now, by the entire ABC network, uh, Good Morning America was in progress in the East Coast and the Midwest, but we're joined by the entire network just to show you some pictures at the foot of New York City. This is at the World Trade Center. Obviously, a major fire there, and there has been some sort of explosion. We don't fully know the details. There is one report, as of yet unconfirmed, that a plane has hit of the World Trade Center, and you can see that there is smoke there coming out of at least two sides of the building. And as you said, there are two towers, the tallest structures in Manhattan, on the island of Manhattan. We're trying to get people on the telephone to see what more we can learn. We have no idea if it was a plane, was it in any sense deliberate, was it an accident. It does seem to be that there is considerable and, and truly terrifying damage on some of those floors at the top. Th this angle is a little deceptive. As you know, there are two Trade Center towers, and the second tower there is hidden behind uh, the first. This is uh, really almost the picture postcard of New York City. Um, it's the, uh, that and the Empire State Building, I guess, are the two most recognizable symbols of New York. There you can see uh, the two, well, we had there for just briefly the other angle of the World Trade Center towers. But this is uh, confined to one of the towers on the upper floors. Uh, these buildings, uh, I think they're 110 stories each, so this would be in the... Uh, in the top 15 or 20 floors there. You mentioned earlier that, of course, as we all know, years ago there was that terrorist attack. It took place down on the ground and in the underground levels and the garage levels. Uh, but again, that's not to imply that we have any reason yep. at this point to believe that this is, this is terrorism or not. We simply don't know. And in just a few minutes, Peter Jennings is going to be joining us from the news desk uptown where he's going to tell us everything that he knows. We also have Don Daler on the phone, and you know he's been with us on Good Morning America for a long time. And Don, where are you, and what do you know? I'm about four or five blocks just north of the World Trade Center. And uh, at about 10, I would say 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, there was a loud sound that I, I can only describe as it sounded like a missile, not an airplane. Then there was a loud explosion, and immediately lots of screaming out on the streets. Uh, and I don't want to cause any speculation, but that's the only way I could describe the sound. And it, and it was definitely not the sound of a prop plane or anything like that. And am I right? Are you a pilot? Well, I have flown. I do not have a pilot's license. But I, I grew up on military bases, and I know the sound of jets. And, and I've been in war zones and, and heard those kinds of different sounds. So again, not to cause any kind of undue speculation, but. The sound itself was not of a prop plane. It was perhaps a jet, but it could have been a missile as well. C can you give me, was it, was it a whining sound, Don, or what? Yes, it was a, it was a uh, how to describe it? It was a high-pitched, but it had a, 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 a whooshing sound, not, not like a prop plane. Huh. And you didn't see anything, actually, in the air? No, I wasn't looking out, but we looked out immediately. You can see quite a lot of damage. Uh, it, if it was a, an airplane, it had to be huge because it hit way up in the World Trade Center. It w I would say it's probably uh, probably a good five, six of the way up to the top. Mm. There's a considerable amount of flame. There's damage on two sides that I can see. On the very north-facing side, there's where it looks like is the largest amount of damage. 
there's a gigantic hole that encompasses a number of floors. I would say maybe 10 to 15 floors. And then on the left side, which would be the east side, there's considerable damage as well and lots of flames and smoke coming out of it. You know, I, I don't know that people outside New York realize it, but these two buildings are essentially cities in and of themselves. I mean, there's 30 to 40,000 people, if I remember the number, and I'm doing this from memory. Yes. Number of people who actually work in these buildings, and this obviously occurred at the time that people were coming to work. Don, are you saying that this sound was striking enough that you heard it before you saw it? I noticed it before the explosion. I noticed a very a sound like something was very low and shrieking across the sky. And then I heard the explosion. And which of the two towers is this? Because, again, we're just seeing an angle that's a little deceptive. This is the West Tower. Mm -hmm. Now, we're hearing, uh, we're hearing somewhat uh, faintly in the background, Don, as you talk to us, uh, sirens. Are there a lot of emergency vehicles already on the scene? Yeah, side? they're descending. This part of New York City has quite a few emergency stations uh, all over and I'm, I imagine it sounds like they're coming from every one of the stations. In fact, there's one just down the street that sounds like every truck they have is, is headed that way. We, we see, actually, uh, we see two faces. I know you can't see the picture that our audience is seeing, but we see two faces of that tower. One seems to have a rather gaping large hole in it. Uh, the other face seems to have two holes in it. Uh, it's all somewhat obscured by smoke. One large, one, one somewhat smaller. Right. And, of course, we know there are a variety of offices there. There are financial offices there. There are advertising offices, all kinds. We can only hope that since it is still a little bit early in New York, that maybe, that maybe on some of those floors, some of the offices were still not open for business. You can now see there on that one side, if, well, you can see flames now coming actually out of two sides uh, of the building. And I, I'm uh, minimizing actually the number of, uh, of openings that are on those uh, two faces of the World Trade Center. There's multiple it looks like uh, holes with fire or openings, still going on uh, yeah. on on both sides of the tower as we've heard uh, before we said earlier that there was at least one speculative report that an airplane had crashed in whether deliberately or accidentally we don't know and they are continuing reports from people who say that that they saw an airplane one woman saying that she saw a jet going in. So again, Don, a jet screaming that low could be consistent with what you heard? Absolutely. It, it could be consistent with what I heard. What I know I, I, I did not hear was an airplane, any kind of a prop plane. And I think looking at the damage, I don't think there's any way possible that it would have been a pop, mm. prop plane. It's just too much damage to the building. Mm. It, it, what's deceptive about the World Trade Center is that it is so huge and so tall that the perspective is difficult to get from the ground. But when you look at the, the size of the hole, and if you look in, in context at one of the helicopters going around at a lower size, a helicopter is about the size of a regular Cessna, that kind of thing, the body of the plane. The hole is so much larger than and that helicopter that it, it would have to, if it was a, a, a jet, I would, I would have to speculate there would have to be a larger than normal jet. I mean, a, larger than like a, a Citation or something like that. It's just such a gigantic hole, and it blew out the other side. And again, these, are, these buildings are almost a city block size building. So for it to have blown in this hole on the, on the north side, as well as the west side, it had to be a, a gigantic explosion. Well, obviously, we don't know if, this was, if, if it was a plane, and I and underline if it was. We don't know if it would have been deliberate or accidental. We know so little now other than what we can see from these pictures. But the interesting point is there are a number of small airports around New York uh, where uh, passenger uh, uh, corporate jets or private jets uh, will land and take off. And it's not uncommon if you have ever visited the World Trade Center. When you go up to the observation platforms at the top, uh, you can look down on airplanes that are either coming in for landings or taking off uh, from New York airports. But all pilots who fly in this area know very well where the World Trade Center is located. All the routes are very far or comfortably far away from the two towers. And not just private planes, too, because with some winds and some directions, even out of the big commercial airports, planes are routed quite close to New York. I've flown in from LaGuardia, even into LaGuardia, but having to go right by the World Trade Centers. But we emphasize this is all speculative at this point. And just to reset for all of you, this is a special report 
from ABC News, and we are dealing, and we have to underline this, we are dealing purely in the realm of speculation here as to what may have happened at the World Trade Center. Obviously, a major incident occurred here on the upper floors of one of the World Trade Center towers. You can see multiple openings and flames coming out of at least two sides of the tower at the World Trade Center. And we just ahead, got a report that the Associated Press is now reporting that it was an aircraft. So that's one more witness weighing in, or at least one more source weighing in on the fact that it was an aircraft of some kind. And as Don Daler reported, this occurred about 15 or 20 minutes ago in downtown New York. Uh, and New York time, uh, that would have been about uh, 20 minutes or a quarter of nine. This is a time when literally tens of thousands of people are coming to work uh, at the World Trade Center. Looking at the top of the building, you mentioned there's an observation center, and uh, I don't know what time it opens, but I think it opens fairly early, and people are fairly early, and people are up there at all hours of the day. Families, tourists coming in to look at the city of New York from atop it. Also, there, I don't know if this is the building that has the restaurant on top of it as well, but in those high floors, there are places where tourists team in the morning, even if the regular workers weren't in. And we remind you again that there was a terrorist bomb that did go off at the World Trade Center years ago. It was down in the garage level, but we have no Obviously reason no to indication say over that this could have been related to that. that right. Now, Don Daler, ABC's Don Daler, who is on the scene. Don, just give me some description again of what, you're, uh, what you can see now. What we're seeing, it appears that the, there is more and more fire and smoke enveloping the very top of the building. And as fire crews are descending on this area, it, it, it does not appear that there's any kind of a, an effort up there yet. Now remember, oh my God. Oh my God. That looks like a second plane. Dear has just I didn't see a plane go in. That, that just exploded. We I, just saw another plane coming saw, in from the side. You did. I did that was out of absolute Yes, and that's view. the second explosion. You could see the plane come in just from the right-hand side of the screen. So this looks like it is oh, some Lord. sort of a concerted Deliberate. effort to attack the World Trade Center that is underway in downtown New York. We will see that scene again just to make sure we saw what we thought. We're going to give you a replay of what we just saw. And I, I must admit, I thought it was some sort of fire equipment coming in or some sort of observation plane. But it was obviously designed to attack the World Trade Center. We're going to show you that. Here's a replay of the videotape. In a second, that looks like a good-sized plane came in and hit the World Trade Center from the other side. So this is obviously, or would seem to be, and again, I'm dealing in speculation, but it would seem like there is a concerted attack against one of the to towers of the World Trade Center underway. We had seen a plane coming in from the other direction earlier. I'd noticed it had you, Charlie. I didn't know if it was that plane that then circled wide and came back from another direction, but we all watched it. And I just assumed. Don, that it could was... you hear that? Could you hear that plane as it came in? I did not hear that plane, but I had to step inside the window because the the fire crews were so loud, the sirens that I couldn't hear you. I got you. I did see the explosion, but the side of the building that the plane entered was just outside of my view. So all I saw was this huge fireball and the explosion. Well, the shot that we've got is now just from one side of the World Trade Center. But this is the shot again. This is moments ago of this, of this second plane coming in. And this is now in slow motion. Oh, this is terrifying. Awful. To watch powerless is a horror. All right, we're going to go back to live coverage. Now you're looking at live pictures, and there is the second fire, uh, which was brought about by this second plane that hit the tower. And, Don, from everything I can see, it was the same tower that was hit the first time, right? No, it's the second tower. It it's the other the, tower. It is the other tower that was hit. My so mistake. They, they targeted it. From, your, from what I'm seeing on the television, from your view, they are... The, they, the two towers are, are in, one is in front of the other one, but it was definitely the second tower that was hit about halfway down, not quite as high. And from my view here, 
it does not seem to be as as big as much damage as the original. It, it, I don't know if that means it was not as big a a plane or what. I did not see the plane go in, but it's I mean it's horrendous damage. But it doesn't seem to be the gaping hole through two sides of the building like on the on the first one. Don, from your vantage point, can you see if there are people coming out down below? I'm, I, I can't see the, uh, the bottom of the base of the buildings. There's the wider shot of the two towers. Now, both towers have been hit by planes now in the last half hour. And again, I say we are, we are totally powerless in knowing what's going on here, except that it would obviously appear this is, it can't be a coincidence like this. It would obviously be some sort of a concerted attack. Uh, against both towers of the World Trade Center. This is the, again, we're going to show for the third time this tape of the, uh, of the airplane flying in and hitting the World Trade Center. This is slow-mo, slow motion of the plane coming in and hitting the obscured second tower of the World Trade Center. And you can see flame coming out, and I can't see the plane coming down. You know, if it just Charlie, lands, that is, that's a commercial-sized jet. That is, that did not look like. No, that's a good-sized airplane. Yes. Yeah, that is. That's not a, a little commuter plane. That was a good-sized jet. And I can't tell if it actually flew into the building or if it just uh, clipped it with a wing. And if it did, of course, then there's the frightening prospect that the plane would have crashed right on the streets of very busy streets of New York. Yeah. It seems, and um, this is. A small hope that the fire may have gone out from the first site. I don't know if we can get the cl camera in close or not. It doesn't mean that the smoke isn't still terrifying and deadly. Diane, I can see from here the orange flames. The, the fire has not gone out. In fact, it's, it looks as if it's encompassing a part of the building that was not initially part of the, the original explosion. I can see it moving over to the left side, which would be the east side of the, the first building almost all the way over to the edge. The, the back side is totally enveloped in, in flames that I can see from here. Yes, it, with that kind of smoke, there's got to be an awful lot of flame in there. And, and, and I think all of us have thought at one point or another about the fact that these buildings, though they are so majestic as they stand above the skyline of New York, that it's very difficult for emergency workers or firefighters to, to uh, fight these. We have a, a, a witness who has called in uh, to speak to us. His name is Kareem Hiroki. Mr. Hiroki, did you, as I understand, they're telling me in my ear, is it, is it true that you witnessed the first plane hit the tower? Yeah. Could you, could you give me some sort of a description of it? I was sitting in my car here in Greenwich, you know. I just saw the plane is coming down from, from the left side and going straight to the building, you know, and going inside. It actually went inside the building? Excuse me? It went in, it flew right into the building. I saw it coming from the left and I saw the plane coming through to the building. I go inside. It's a small plane. You say small plane. Was it a jet? Excuse me? Was it a jet plane? No, no. It was plane. You know, like the, they teach the, the people for the, the plane is what, like a small plane, you know? It's that kind of plane. You mean like a, uh, a small single or double engine? Uh, yeah, uh, prop double plane. engine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, and, and it actually went into the building there on the upper yeah, floor. Yeah, going into the building. And I never saw that plane before. It's like something, I don't know, it's like they walk with the mold. Or I never saw a plane like that before. Yeah. All he right, Mr. Car, she's nice. Mr. Hiroki, you are down in that area right now then? Yeah, I'm in Greenwich here on North Moore Street. Can you, can you tell uh, if there's a large number of, uh, of, of fire equipment and, uh, and emergency equipment on the scene? Me? Can you see fire equipment or emergency equipment on the scene? I don't know. The fire is upstairs in the building, and the second plane is, is, is where the, the other building comes. And did you see the second plane come in? Yeah, just... I, I saw, yeah, I saw the second plane is go boom. I, I, I heard, you know. I just wake up my head like that. I saw it inside, too. And that second plane much larger than the first? Same. The same. Two boats. Both same. They're the, both the same? Yeah. Because the pictures we see, the second plane looks rather large. No, it's, not right. it's going inside, too. It's going inside on the building, too. And, and the second hole, it's smaller than the other one. And it actually also penetrated the building. You can see it go in. Yeah, it's inside. It's inside. It's now, inside. No plane is outside. Nothing. Now, can you see if there are people fleeing the building? We don't have shots yet from street level. Can you see if there are people leaving the building? No, I can't see because I told you. I'm in North Moran Greenwich. I just saw up the building. I can't see downstairs. 
So you're in Greenwich Village? Yeah, I'm in, no, in Greenwich Street and North Mall. Oh, I see, on Greenwich Street. Okay, yeah. I, I can, though well, that's, that's uh, just to locate people who don't know New York, that is right in the vicinity, right nearby, um, but not actually on the site of the, uh, of the World Trade Centers. Uh, ABC's Peter Jennings is uh, at the anchor desk uh, uptown here in New York and is now in position. Peter, I suspect you are looking at exactly the same pictures. Well, I know you're looking at the same pictures we are. We are, Charlie. We've been watching it from the beginning. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be watching this for much of the day. There is chaos in New York at the moment. There have been not one but two incidents, as Charlie and Diane have so ably reported so far. The second one coming at 9.03, uh, when television was on live, and you could see what was clearly a jet aircraft flying into the second trade tower. Both trade towers now, these 110-story high towers, have now been hit. There is chaos here, uh, or there's chaos in the immediate area. There is confusion in Washington because now everybody is engaged in this. The Pentagon is involved in this. All the intelligence services are engaged at this in the morning. And as we look at those towers, let's just simply keep looking at these towers this morning. Um, and if you have the feed at home, I actually don't have it here, so somebody could please make sure that I have the photo picture of what's going on. Um, the various airports in the, in the area, uh, Newark and LaGuardia particularly, have already suspended operations. Uh, the city asked the Federal Aviation Administration for permission to close down airspace um, in all of New York, uh, lest there be a third aircraft or some other untoward incident involved. Um, and ABC's John Miller is with me here, who's been listening uh, efficiently to all of his police sources. And John, I gather the city is ordering a major evacuation from a number of public buildings and a number of these very high-profile targets. They're going into uh, what they call an Archangel operation, which is a code name for uh, essentially a major lockdown of the city, evacuating the United Nations building, the municipal building, City Hall, Gracie Mansion, which is the mayor's residence, all things that could be considered targets, because obviously, because of the nature of this, with two incidents, uh, there is the potential that this is uh, a double act of terrorism mm -hmm. and they are worried about other targets. All right, let's go back to the building itself, John. You worked the police radio, if you would, for just a minute. The FBI is already investigating reports that a plane was actually hijacked uh, before this uh, collision, this incident, this uh, attack uh, occurred at the World Trade Towers. Uh, in Washington at the moment, the presumption is uh, that this is a terrorist attack, according to ABC's John McCarthy, though it's very difficult at the moment uh, for anybody to get a clear appreciation of what has actually happened because it has happened so quickly. First attack coming just before 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and the second attack, which we could all watch, those of us who are watching television, uh, occurring at 9.03, just three minutes after. Uh, the president is in Florida, and he has already been told of what is happening. Um, these trade towers have always been have always been, and you may have heard it already this morning, uh, regarded as a prime target for this particular act of terrorism. As you know, there was terrorism at the World Trade Center before 1993. Uh, there was a huge bombing attack on the Trade Centers. These are the two at the southwestern corner of the island of Manhattan, um, just prime pieces of real estate of interest to anyone who wishes to hit either New York City or the United States in a very, very visible and vulnerable way. We have with us at the moment Lindsey Grimm, a witness who was in the building on the phone. Lindsey, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you tell me what you know? Well, I actually, just to clear things up, I wasn't in the building. I was in the World Financial Center, which is directly behind it. Okay. And I was, I was, uh, on the, our part of the building faces the section, um, the courtyard where the, where the World Trade Center is. So we ran to the window right after we, we, we felt this kind of a sonic boom as if it were an earthquake and something just wasn't right. We ran to the window and somebody yelled, oh my God, a plane just flew into the World Trade Center. Is this what we think of as the first one or the second one, Lindsay? Uh, it was the first one because I was actually outside for the second one. And the first one appears to have gone into the Southern Tower, am I correct? Correct. And this second one, did you see the second one? I, was, I had my back facing. I was running as fast as I, well, not running, but walking at a brisk pace away from the two buildings when I heard it. And people just started screaming and running. Now, you know the area fairly well working down there. Is, is 9 o'clock in the morning the time when people have gathered in very large number? People get there earlier, get there later? Yeah, I actually just happen. I usually get here a little after 9, and I happen to be here early for a, morning this mo uh, for a meeting this morning. So, yeah, I mean, it's... It, you, you see the general amount of traffic mm. about 9 o'clock. Is that when it happened, right at 9? No, just before and just after 9. Okay. In, in that there have been two. Can you see outside?
outside at the moment is to anything I'm, I'm out, I am outside. And what do you, where are you and what are you seeing? I am west of the two buildings, looking directly at them, and it's, it's difficult to look at. I'll tell you that much. This is not an area which is easy to reach for emergency services. These two buildings, hug, uh, Hudson River, there's only the, uh, the west side drive that comes up there. Is there a large amount of emergency equipment descending on the place? There sure is. As soon as I got out of the building, it's obviously the first thing you're surrounded by is, is siren noise everywhere. And you can hear it coming by now, even still. Anything else you know that you'd like to add? Uh, just as I was coming out of the building, um, I heard somebody sort of ushering people away, and they were saying, you guys got to get out of here, it's a bomb. Many thanks, Lindsey Grimm, who saw this occurring, at least the first, uh, hesitate to call it an attack. The first incident, we'll continue to call it for now, and very much the second one now. That's what it looks like. Both of the towers in the Twin Trade Towers are now on fire. We have no idea whatsoever uh the the measure of casualties inside or the measure of damage inside though you can only imagine it the new york city of office of emergency management said to us a short while ago they do not know what happened yet um i want to check in very quickly with the president of the united states john cochran who is the president in florida john peter as you know the president's down in florida talking about education he got up out of his uh, hotel suite this morning was about to leave Reporters saw the White House Chief of Staff, Andy Card, whisper into his ear. Then reporters said to the President, do you know what's going on in New York? He said he did, and said he will have something to say about it later. His first event is about a half an hour at a, an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. Thanks, John. John Cochran with the President. President's in Florida today pushing his education reform. It will get wiped off of the agenda today in view of this extraordinarily serious accident. For those of you who don't know, the Twin Trade Towers, and it's a popular destination for tourists when they come to New York City. It has financial offices in it. It has government offices. <coughs> it has lots of access on the top, um, above where this accident actually, where this incident actually occurred, where tourists come. Um, it's one of the great views in New York City, and people gather there, certainly at the foot of the building, fairly early in the morning, to be able to go and see it. The two. Collisions, the two incidents have occurred about two thirds of the way up. Um, John Miller, we haven't, <coughs> excuse me, we haven't had an aircraft fly into a building in New York, as far as I know, since just after the Second World War when the Empire State Building. When it flew into the Empire State Building. That's right, a, a B 52 flew into the Empire State Building uh, then, and uh, this, is, uh, this is really the first time there's been anything like that since. John, I was listening as you and, and uh, Chris Isham, the head of our investigative unit, wandered up here to the rim just a short while ago to saying, one of you, I think, this is something they've been waiting to happen. Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? What we were talking about is uh, there's been a great uh, frustration since the bombing of the World Trade Center, which the suspects later told federal authorities w were intended to take the building down, that it didn't have a larger effect. And U.S. intelligence, FBI uh, people for years have heard that they've always wanted to try and finish that job off um, to take the buildings out and uh, that it was another viable target. Interestingly, ironically, whatever you want to call it, the World Trade Center just hired two weeks ago the head of the FBI's National Security Division for Counterterrorism in New York to augment and take over their security, pretty much aware of the level of threat that this is as a symbolic target. One of the things that anybody mounting security in the World Trade Center himself um, will not be able to necessarily appreciate is what has happened at some distance. And there are a couple of reports, speculative at the moment, drifting around, including one on the Associated Press, which says the FBI is investigating reports of a plane hijacking uh, just before the World Trade Center actually crashed. And John McCarthy, our national security correspondent, is with us in Washington. John, what do you know? Peter, we do hear that uh, there was a hijacking. It is not clear where that hijacking occurred at this point, uh, but it is one of the many things that U.S. officials are scrambling to try to get a handle on at this point. Anything else, John? What happens at the Pentagon at a moment like this? I know everybody springs into action, but what do they do? What happens is uh, there is a particular counterterrorism cell uh, within the Joint Chiefs of Staff that goes into an emergency uh, basis at this point. They're investigating all aspects of uh, air traffic in the area, uh, all intelligence that 
as they sift through it uh, may have given them some indication that something was happening. At this point, though, there were no warnings, they say, this morning. Uh, as they go back through this information, they may call through it and find some clue, but at this point, they believe there is no warning. Thank you very much, John, which would please call us back as soon as you have something which would call into question immediately, of course, the notion of counter-terrorism uh, in an incident like this. <clears throat> now, nobody who was on watching television, watching Good Morning America today, for example, saw, at least those of us working on television, saw a first plane crash into the building. Um, much of the country watching television this morning will have seen the second plane uh, crash into the other tower. And we have, as you can see from a distance there, until we get our cameras on the ground, uh, producing material which we can put on the air, a pretty limited view. So we have no idea what the evacuation procedure is in the building. It's we do know... Difficult. We're listening in the background. Uh, at this time, all elevators are out in both towers, according to the rescue workers on the scene. They put out an urgent call for Scott air packs uh, because they're climbing smoke-filled stairwells. They've got to go very high up to get to the target locations, and they're talking about people trapped in the smoke there. And this, of course, is reminiscent of, uh, of 1993 when the explosions occurred at the Trade Towers last time. Exactly. John, is it standard operating procedure? You mentioned that all of the other principal government buildings in the city, Gracie Mansion, the mayor's official residence, and some of the other buildings will be evacuated. Is that a fairly standard anticipated operation it is an existing plan um, that is on paper but peter i have to say uh... it's never been put into effect in new york this is unprecedented and i think um, as this develops you'll see similar plans go into effect in washington and potential target buildings because mm -hmm. they really have to take the position that they're under some form of attack here, at least as a precaution, until they sort this out. As we wait to get a better grasp of, of what now becomes a rescue operation of the people in the Twin Tread Towers, we're reminded here that the U.S. officials, according to Pentagon sources, have no warnings uh, today of any kind of terrorist attack. And if you listen to the news on a regular basis, you hear the Pentagon warning Americans worldwide of some impending terrorist attack. And here we are in the height of commercial <coughs> America, um, with, uh, with no warning whatsoever, no intelligence whatsoever, as far as we can tell, at least in these first couple of hours. No, and all of the latest intelligence, um, at least the basics of which I've been scanning for months, um, have focused on the high potential for attacks against American targets abroad. Indeed, uh, federal authorities and the intelligence community re have reported they've, they've interdicted and interrupted um, more than a dozen of them and interrupted um, more than a dozen of those attacks by shutting terrorist cells down around the world. They've always been worried since the first attack on the World Trade Center that there would be another bold strike on U.S. soil. Mm. And of course there are any number of targets which have been high on counterintelligence's list in New York City, the Lincoln Tunnel, the United Nations, the Holland Tunnel, uh, the FBI headquarters, not to mention all of the city civic buildings which John mentions. President Bush is, by the way, going to speak very shortly to the nation about this, and then he's going to return to Washington. And we have on the phone our principal aviation analyst and expert, John Nance. Good morning, John. Good morning, Peter. What would you like to contribute to this? Because uh, one knows that it is indeed possible to fly an aircraft into a building if one intends to do so. If one intends to do so, that's correct. And unfortunately, when you've got something that has been as, uh, as worrisome a target uh, as, uh, as the World Trade Center, regardless of the way we've hardened it up uh, on the ground, they have apparently, whoever they is, picked the one vulnerable area. The thing that is most disturbing to me uh, is not only the, uh, uh, the, the fact, of course, that there are people more than likely in that building that have been directly affected by this, but that we may have an innocent load of passengers. Uh, the flash of that second aircraft across the screen uh, is disturbingly close to what you would call the plan form of an Airbus A319 or an Airbus 320. Uh, also of a 767 or something of that nature. And just uh, that's a large airplane. John, let me go slowly with you because, and we'll, a we'll actually put it on the screen again, very slowly, so that we can see it come across screen. Are you able to identify specifically the type of aircraft by looking at this videotape as it comes across? Can we roll I'm, that, please? I'm watching that right uh, as it comes across the screen. And uh, it, it is more than likely not a Boeing 737 
that uh, that profile, Peter, is very close to an Airbus uh, A320, A319. And who flies the Airbus 320, 318? We have quite a few airlines. Okay, so uh, we have uh, very few private ones. All right, and and with and John uh, comports a little bit here hey, with Mark, at least these. Right uh, initial reports that the FBI is investigating reports of a hijacking uh, just before the second crash uh, occurred. We had no... Um, John, let me just ask you one of the technical question about just flying in the World Trade Center. When yes. the first, when the first uh, incident occurred, um, it was reasonable for people to suspect that there that was an accident. Yes. Um, from a flying point of view, is the World Trade Center always something to worry about if you're taking off from one of New York City's airports? Not really. Uh, and the fact that we have had all these years since that B-25 crashed into the Empire State Building tells you a lot about the flight paths around New York City. You, you have to be so disastrously out of contact and off course, and so many things would have to go wrong to imperil any of the buildings in Manhattan. The fact that it hasn't happened tells us uh, really how rare a situation it would have to be. Uh, John, the FAA immediately asked for New York City airports to suspend operations. We can confirm that Newark and LaGuardia have closed. Down. And can we Kennedy confirm? and uh, Teterboro and Westchester, yes. they've essentially asked all airports mm -hmm. within a 20-mile ra radius to put a hold on anything taken off. Teeter Bear Airport, which is in New Jersey, just on the west side of the Hudson River in Westchester, which is maybe 40, 50 miles north of New York City. They're all suspended operations. Standard, uh, easy to do, John, quick to do, it seems to have been so. Fortunately, very, very quick to do because uh, they're all controlled by air traffic control towers and they can put a halt to the operations with one phone call. Okay, John Nance, thanks very much. Call us back, will you, if you, uh, if you, if you learn anything. Peter, one of the difficulties they're going to face, as you can glean from this picture here, is the people who are trapped and need to be rescued are on the upper floors, but you see the plume of smoke covers the roof. The last explosion was at the bottom of the building and the smoke rose up, but they were able to make a series of daring rescues by landing, and they've trained for this and retrained landing police helicopters on the roofs of the Twin Towers and pulling people out. It's going to be very difficult, uh, since the roofs are now enveloped in smoke, for the police helicopters, which are arriving at a landing zone now, just below the World Trade Center, to be able to get up there till that smoke dissipates. Um, and that's where they had expected to pull a lot of people out uh, this time, because they had so much success the last time. Similarly, John, if you look at the two buildings, it does appear that at least in the, in the northern tower there, or the left tower, as you see it on the screen, uh, below the incident, the building at least looks on the outside to be reasonably secure. Um, and people will have a long, horrendous, terrifying walk down in a darkened building. Um, but we'll at least be able to get out on the ground. By the way, Claire Shipman, uh, ABC's Claire Shipman, just called in. To, she's been checking with the FBI. She also says that the FBI had no warning whatsoever. Their crisis management operation in Washington is in place uh, in conjunction with the Federal Aviation Administration, they are all now, which makes perfect sense, focusing on uh, the recovery of survivors. Um, the New York Stock Exchange has, uh, has delayed indefinitely its opening uh, today. Uh, this, this will just have not only an extraordinary effect on the national psyche, one surmises, um, dissimilar perhaps, but but from what happened in Oklahoma City, but a very clear reminder to those of us in the United States that terrorism of a huge magnitude, with which we're somewhat more accustomed in the Middle East and in Africa, given the attacks on the U.S. embassies a couple of summers ago. But a reminder again that as far as international terrorism is concerned and people's anger and even desperation on this occasion with the United States is going to find itself manifest um, here on U.S. soil. John, is the, here's the president now in, in Florida. I wonder if everybody knows there what's going on. We'll listen to him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a difficult moment for America. I, um, unfortunately, will be going back to Washington after my remarks. Secretary of Rod Page and Lieutenant Governor <clears throat> will take the podium and discuss education. I do want to thank the folks here at, uh, at the Booker Elementary School for their hospitality. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. 
I have spoken to the vice president, to the governor of New York, to the director of the FBI, and have ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence. May God bless the victims, their families, and America. Thank you very much. President clearly shaken, I think one can say, um, confirming what we think we all knew, which was the two aircraft um, in an act of terrorism uh, crashed into the twin trade towners. Nobody was quite certain about the first one uh, at the very outset that the president absolutely, having talked to the vice president, the governor of New York, the director of the FBI, uh, now believing and confirming that we have two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center and the president saying the two things which a president must say at a moment like this terrorism will not stand uh, which is an important thing for him to say but not always necessarily effective and God bless the victims and their families John Miller what are you picking up on the police radio um, we'll there, was a, there was a bit of a stir a moment ago because LaGuardia Tower reported urgently that there was another aircraft moving fast in the no-fly zone. Now they've contacted that aircraft and they say it's a military aircraft that's rushed to the scene to uh, enforce the no-fly zone and literally be a presence in the area in case there is another plane headed for the building so that there'll be some uh, at least armed aircraft up to confront it. Just think for a second, John, how, how you have drawn an extraordinary parallel. We, we think of no-fly zones as being in southern, southern Iraq. and northern Iraq, where the Iraqis are not allowed to fly, and if they do fly, are going to be shot down. Now we have a no-fly zone um, all around the lower part of New York City and perhaps on the, on the northern area, too. All of the area's airports closed down and armed American aircraft in the air to shoot down anybody else who wants to take a shot at the place. I mean, those, those are the reports that are coming yeah. across the radio now, and, and if they're true, it's, it's quite incredible and certainly unprecedented. Well, it, it would also suggest, uh, as best you can tell, looking at it from this very sort of antiseptic uh, environment that we are all in in our newsrooms, is that the reaction has been fairly quick. New York City has an Office of Emergency Management. It's over here on the west side. It's, it's a great bunker. Um, which the city ironically, it's, it's located in the World Trade Center complex, although not in the, in the Twin Towers. Just right north, next door. Of, north of the Trade Towers right. in, in the World Trade Center, in the other northern World Trade Center there. And on an occasion like this, this is not one I, they, they absolutely anticipate when they get going. They're talking very concerned with chemical and biological warfare. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press. They've got extensive plans about that, which they very often demonstrate to the press. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself and everybody else for a second, because one of our senior producers, Mark Obenhaus, uh, is on the phone, and he saw the incident. Mark, do you hear me? I do indeed, Peter. Go ahead. Um, well, I was leaving my house uh, to go to work, at, and I walked down the street to go to the subway. I was at the corner of Franklin and West Broadway, and as I was approaching the subway, a tremendous roar uh, uh, went over my head, and, and I looked up immediately, and it was a plane, um, and much lower than I've ever seen a plane in Lower Manhattan. And it was a large plane. I couldn't <coughs> identify it as anything specific, except that it was a commercial jet, certainly. Um, and it, it, then it, my eyes followed it, because this is approximately 15 blocks from the World Trade Center, and it, it just slammed right into it and was completely engulfed. By the, by the building. It was extraordinary. No, no wings flew off, nothing like that. It just went directly in, creating this sort of cavern-like hole. And, and suddenly then big, big uh, flames started protruding from it, and then, of course, smoke. And, and, and then debris started just catapulting. And, of course, the area that we're in, there's a great deal of foot traffic, and people are just approaching and beginning to just gasp at 
uh, at just the site of the building itself, even if they hadn't seen it, uh, the actual incident, the actual impact, just the site of this huge building it engulfed in flame with this massive cavernous hole in the side of it. And we stood there, I can't tell you the amount of time, I, I would estimate about 15 minutes. And, uh, and, and of course, there's all kinds of services coming down, fire department and so forth. And then suddenly, from my vantage point, which would be north of the building, the, sec the, the far tower suddenly explodes in flames. Uh, uh, yet again, a similar kind of, a, of an event, and I now see, I've, I've run down the street to my home where I have the television on, and I saw the, that that, too, was another airplane. It, it, from our vantage point, you couldn't tell what exactly it was that hit the, hit the, hit the second tower, but it was a, a similar, seemingly almost like bomb blast, uh, and with flames and debris protruding wildly from, from the building. Mark, let me ask you a couple of more specific questions. You now confirm for us, I think, that it was the first attack on the tower that you saw. Yes. What, what direction was the aircraft coming from? It was coming from the north. It was coming it, from the north down over Manhattan itself? Yes. Um, it, well, it would have been flying roughly over the west side. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on, as I say, West Broadway, which is probably a quarter mile from the river. Um, so it was on a direct path north, from the north, uh, into, the, uh, into the north tower. Do you remember whether it had two engines? three engines or four uh, I engines. do not. It was very quick. It, it struck me, uh, you know, the, 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 the profile, the, the, bo the body of the plane um, was of such scale that I immediately identified it as a commercial jet. I didn't, couldn't, it happened so quickly I couldn't tell whether it had windows on the side or what. It, I mean, it could very well have been a, some sort of a, of a uh, transport plane, but it was a large, large plane. Um, as opposed to occasionally down here, you do see smaller uh, prop planes or uh, smaller aviation uh, stuff that uh, flies around here, sometimes doing movies and things like that. But uh, in all my years down here, and I've lived down here for about 20 years within uh, walking distance easily of the building, I've never heard anything like this. And that's, what, that's why I, I just immediately glanced up and just followed the, the track of this sound and this huge plane that was swooping over my head. Could you see any markings on it whatsoever? No, I did not. It was too, too quick. I, 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 I can't uh, give you any kind of identifying help on, do, on, on what, it, what it was. Do you remember what color it was? Was it, was I, it? My impression was, uh, was that it had a tan uh, coloration to it. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. uh, the sun it was very low in the horizon, and I think uh, it kind of orange. And it may have been simply the color of the sun reflecting off a silver um, exterior. I, I really am not sure of that. Okay, Mark, anything else? What's the, what's the, uh, what's the mood in the environment oh, down there at the I moment as if it's not I mean, hard to imagine? It, 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 and everyone who, who glimpses it close up, it's quite different seeing it from the ground than on, on these television pictures that I'm now looking at because it's, it's close to you and you, you see what the impact must have been like and you see the kind of devastation that uh, has, has uh, incurred by, by the buildings and it's just uh, it's, it's, uh, it's frightening is uh, perhaps even too mild a word. Okay. Um, it's absolutely uh, just a, a horrible, horrible sight. It, 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 it reminds you of the worst kind of effect mm. in movies that you know, you're reassured watching a movie that it's an effect, but this is not. Well, Mark, uh, you and I are supposed to have a meeting not long from now. Uh, we'd prefer you to go and work the story, if you would, and call us back as soon I as you can. I will indeed. Many thanks. Mark Obenhaus, one of our senior producers on the phone who saw the incident, describes it as a large plane, not sure what the color was, not sure the number of engines it had, which, in his mind, he's a very experienced reporter, reflects the speed and surprise with which this aircraft, this is the first one we're talking about now, just before 9 o'clock, approached the World Trade Towers from the north, um, causing the first huge gap in the building. And, and Mark describes the, the plane being engulfed in some respects by the building. Didn't see wings fall off, saw it go absolutely, uh, uh, totally almost as he described it, into the building itself. And we now have had one of the enormous difficulties about terrorism, everybody knows, is that you, you, you almost immediately get a claim of responsibility, and you may get several, and people's suspicions get ramped up, given the obvious nature of people who they think are in, and, or know are involved in terrorism around the world. There has been a claim of responsibility, according to the Raiders News Agency, uh, made to Abu Dhabi television uh, in the Persian Gulf, from uh, something called the Palestinian DFLP. Uh, the Palestinian DFLP is something called the Democratic Front, 
for the liberation of Palestine. Um, it has been for many, many years one of the uh, most militant of the Palestinian organizations. Um, has been involved in violence before, has been involved in, uh, in, in other actions before, and it is the first organization to claim responsibility for this, though we have to caution you in all the obvious ways that before the day is over, um, there may be any number of people who claim responsibility. Uh, the White House, of course, is, 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 has leapt to the forefront of people's concern this morning, and there is a plane circling the White House at the moment, uh, and they're clearing the grounds there. Um, we have that's a report which may be misleading in that it may presume an attack, whereas we just discovered a moment ago that what we had with an additional airplane in New York airspace was a security operation. I think probably most Americans know that there is no building in the country uh, which is which has heavily defended, I shouldn't say deemed secure, but um, a battery of anti-aircraft missiles uh, on the top of the White House itself. Uh, we've had an incident, as you know, in the past, uh, several years ago, where a small aircraft landed in the White House, uh, in the White House garden, and the pilot, uh, um, mentally deranged, as I recall at the time, uh, was killed. Um, but the White House is certainly, certainly been very heavily defended, and this plane circling the White House adds to the trauma that people are feeling today, but we have no idea precisely what that means. John Miller, you're listening. Uh, the scene is still in some degree of chaos, but the police have uh, set up a major mobilization point uh, just outside the building, and they've set up a tactical mobilization point. The major mobilization point is uh, for the responding units involved in the rescue. The tactical one is actually an armed mobilization point for security outside the World Trade Center now. Thanks very much. Let's go to the White House. Claire Shipman is on the phone. Claire, what's that we're looking at? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. All we know is it's a gigantic plume of smoke coming from behind the old executive office building, and we're told that the White House itself, the West Wing, at the very least, is being evacuated, that our personnel from there are being asked to leave. We've sent people um, running over there to try to find out what it is, but we don't know yet. Now, the old executive office building is to the slightly to the west and a fraction to the south. So we are looking southwest from a camera just across Lafayette Park, which is north of the White House. The White House is to the left side, out of your picture. Maybe even the cameraman could give us some appreciation. But you have no idea? Was that an explosion? Did you hear we anything? Did not, we did not hear it. In fact, we were trying to figure out from the White House what security precautions they were taking around the White House. and in the wake of the um, apparent attacks on the World Trade Center, and we suddenly just saw the smoke rising from behind the old executive office building. We have people on their way there now, but it's, it's like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, we've never seen that kind of smoke coming from, from anything that uh, would ordinarily occur here. I must also tell you, Claire, I think if you think about what's behind the, the EOB there, you're really down uh, in pretty open area. It doesn't look like a place where a building would be on fire. No, that's right, although there are a number of buildings just behind the old executive office building on G Street that could potentially be on fire, but nothing you would necessarily think of as a target. Um, apparently, we're also... Claire, let me interrupt you for a second. We now have fire confirmed at the Pentagon. I've, John McCrethy at the Pentagon can hear me. John, please get in touch immediately if you can and brief us in there. John McCrethy has actually been evacuated from the Pentagon and parts of the Pentagon are indeed being evacuated. The Pentagon are indeed being evacuated. Um, we want to hold our breath here, it just seems to me, for a second, and, 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 and not get into a mode that the country is under attack. But we now have two attacks on the Twin Trade Tower Center. U.S. buildings, city buildings completely evacuated in New York City. We have this mysterious black smoke at the southwest corner of the White House, which is to say there's something going on behind the old executive office building. We now have a report that fire has been confirmed at the Pentagon. ABC's John McCrethy, our Pentagon correspondent, who's been plugging in as quickly to the intelligence and counterintelligence units there this morning, has been temporarily evacuated. But that is as much as we know for sure at the moment. John Miller, go back to what you're hearing on your nets. 
Um, actually, it's interesting. Uh, in, the, uh, in New York City, uh, they're reporting um, on what we're seeing here also, essentially trying to uh, tell everybody that uh, heightened security is important now. John, I apologize. There's a lot of us here. What are we listening to there? Say again. Say again, please. Come here, John. Yep. Good. Trying to correct. So we have bomb squads. I, I think you're going to see a lot of this, and I think we were talking about this uh, a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, when I was telling you that in New York they were evacuating the municipal building, the United Nations, uh, Gracie Mansion, which is the mayor's residence, all potential targets, I suggested to you that shortly in Washington you'll probably be seeing the same kind of reaction at sensitive uh, symbolic locations. And apparently that's become more than a concern, but perhaps a reality. Okay, we do know, or at least the Associated Press is now reporting, that an aircraft crashed near the Pentagon, and the West Wing of the White House, as Claire Shipman told us, was evacuated amid these threats of terrorism. I guess what's... Uh, first of all, let me go to another eyewitness. ABC's Bill Blakemore, one of our senior reporters, has been an eyewitness to the New York incident. Bill, are you on the phone? Yes, I am, Peter. Go I'm, ahead. I'm down at 12th Street. Uh, looks like we're more than a mile north of this very surrealistic site, and business has completely come to a stop here. Looks like throughout uh, lower Manhattan, people standing in the streets, cell phones aren't working. A few of these uh, phone booths, such as I'm talking to you from now, are working. One man uh, just shaking his head said to me a few moments ago, I was supposed to be at a meeting in the building at 10.30 this morning, and then I saw the second plane uh, hit the tower in this flash of light. Um, there's, a, there's a complete cessation of regular life. There's one delivery man standing here looking like he doesn't know where to go with this uh, stack of beer crates. So all of lower Manhattan is just standing in the streets on this sunny morning looking at this unrealistic sight in front of us, this gray smoke coming out of the Trade Center. Okay, Bill, talk to as many people as you can. Call us back when you can. I want to let you know we're going to get back to ABC's special coverage, but we ourselves, what started in New York, is now happening in Washington. We want to get more into that this morning. That's right. I'm Carol Costello, Don Hudson. We want to go live to Sam Ford right now. He is live at Reagan National Airport with an update on the air crash at the Pentagon. Sam Ford, tell us what you can. Well, Carol, as you can see, there is this loud, this huge cloud of smoke behind me, and that is the location of the Pentagon. We had come here to National Airport to, you know, continue our coverage of the situation in New York because the airports had been shut down. No sooner had we gotten here and stopped the car than we looked up, and there was this cloud of smoke billowing from the Pentagon. There had been a traffic accident here at National, and a number of emergency vehicles were dealing with that. Then suddenly we saw this, and I would say within a couple of minutes, they were all tearing out of here, heading toward the Pentagon. We asked the folks here, one of the police officers told me that he had heard a plane had gone into the, the Pentagon. Obviously, more of the situations in New York. People here are extremely nervous, and some are saying that uh, they wanted us to leave this area. We don't know if they're going to shut down the airport or evacuate this place. If this is, a, if this is a concern, at this point, people are still here. But there is concern about the safety of this place, obviously, with these bombs going off or planes crashing into buildings all over the place. But that's it here. As you can see, the smoke, and you can see, you Sam, know, paper Sam, flying about. Yes, Carol. Sam, a question for you. We understand that there is a tail section of a plane sticking out of the Pentagon, and a plane did hit the Pentagon. Is that true? Well, at this point, Carol, we are at National Airport, so all we can really see is the flame. Now, I understand we have some photographers over at the Pentagon. I cannot tell you exactly, but if, from In fact, our vantage we, point, we see smoke. Sam, if I can interrupt, we do have an eyewitness who actually saw this event take place. They're on the phone with us now. Is it Mr. or Ms. German? Mr. German. Okay. Mr. German, tell us what happened. Uh, I saw a big explosion, a bowl of fire. My window right, and I looked at it. It was a big bowl of fire and the smoke coming out. But I'm looking at it right now. It's Mr. Navy Annex and Mr. Pentagon. It's like so many uh, high-rise buildings. It's, it's probably a parking lot or there's a cemetery behind the Navy Annex. Mr. Germa, did, Mr. Right. Germa, did you actually see a plane? I didn't see a plane. I, I, I heard the explosion. I thought it was a flyby because I live next to the to the airport. You My must... window rattled. I looked out. I saw a bowl of fire and just smoke coming out. Are you feeling nervous right now, Mr. Oh, Germa? Oh, very much so. I thought I was hit. I mean, the building shook so much. 
Well, he's not, you're not the only one, that's for sure. We, as we keep you on the phone and Sam as well, we're now getting reports that the White House has been threatened here. We're also getting reports the Capitol has been evacuated. The West Wing of the White House evacuated to go along with all this. What started at 8.40 this morning in New York is now threatening, of course, our city, our safety, and a lot of folks and very the pictures, concerned. The pictures you're looking at right now are from our live cameras. You can see smoke pouring near the Pentagon. Mr. Gerba, do you want to add anything? I can hear you're still on the phone with us. I'm trying to get out of here because I live a few miles from the Pentagon. Okay, you get going, Mr. Germa. We understand. Thank you for joining us. Let's go... Uh, Let's go to a White House shot that we have right now. The White House West Wing has been evacuated, as we understand. We know that President Bush is not there, but he is on his way back to Washington. You can see the armed guards on top of the White House keeping watch. But at this point, they, as well as we, don't know exactly what's going to happen. But everyone is on standby, as you might expect. And as you mentioned, in case people are wondering and didn't see President Bush in Florida for an educational issue down there, he made a brief announcement about this and said he was on his way back here to deal with it. And, of course, saying that uh, the terrorist acts will not be tolerated and that they will be looking into it. But after he made that comment is when, the thing, when it happened at the Pentagon. At that time, only the two planes had crashed into the Twin Towers, the World Trade Center in New York. We wish we could tell you more about what's going on in our own backyard at the Pentagon. We don't know if there were any injuries. We do know there was a construction scene on the scene at the time. We, know, we do know when they heard something um, explode, they turned around and they started to run. We do not know if anyone inside the Pentagon or around it was hurt. Okay, we have another person on the phone. Janet, are you with us? Yes, I am. We understand that you witnessed this plane, a plane crash into the Pentagon? Yes, sir, I did. What, tell us exactly what you saw. Well, I live uh, in a high-rise building just outside of, uh, of Roslyn, and I was actually glued to the television, and I have an office here, and it's all glassed in, and I saw a plane just coming right in front of my window, flying at a, a path that the commercial planes do not fly. Uh, not coming into the direction to land at National Airport. How big was the plane? Um, it certainly looked larger. Every once in a while there's a flight path difference for smaller uh, private planes that come in. This was not a small private looking plane. It looked more like sort of a commuter type plane. And you said uh, it, was, it was sizable, yes. And then you said it was headed directly to the Pentagon. Yeah, it was heading in the direction of the airport and I thought this plane is way too low and there's no runway that it goes in that direction and it didn't turn at all. And I just, as soon as I saw it, I knew it was way too low and not on a flight path that I'd ever seen before living here. Okay, and what did you hear? I couldn't hear anything uh, from where I am. I just saw the plane just disappear out of my sight beyond the trees, and then I just saw massive billows of smoke. And, uh, and then a few minutes later, they, I heard it was, and it's basically, it's obviously right where the Pentagon is. I can't see the Pentagon. It's covered with right. trees. Are, are you in a safe place right now? Uh, as far as I know, I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my apartment where I live, so I am on the 13th floor of uh, the high-rise in Roswell here. We, we can see on the bottom right-hand corner of our screen, you can see the firefighters spraying at the Pentagon trying to put out that fire. Jan, did you, were you already aware of what happened in New York when you yes, saw sir. this coming? Yes, sir, I was. I, I was glued to the television. Uh, because I actually am running an event in New York at the oh. end of the week. Oh, you oh. poor thing. Okay, we're going to um, go you, back Janet. to our Sam Ford, who's at Reagan National right now. We understand the FAA has taken some action. Sam, can you tell us what it is? Yes, Carol. Because of this situation, the FAA has shut down all aircraft flights across the country. They, I think it is a situation where it is too dangerous. Right here at National Airport, you normally would have planes taking off and landing. There are no planes taking off or landing here. The skies are clear, and there is smoke covering the area. This gentleman is named Todd Nelson. You were just picking up what debris. What is it, some sort of? It looks like insulation. I was just standing here watching, and all sorts of uh, paper and debris and insulation. I'm was, sorry, yeah, this uh, was, was uh, what? All sorts of paper and debris and insulation were, were just flying down, landing on us over here, and uh, it's just amazing. Yeah, some sort of insulation or some sort of debris that looks appears to have come from the Pentagon crash coming through the air. You could see papers flying through the air, things like that. So that's the word from here. We're hearing the FAA has shut down air traffic across the country because of this situation. Understandable. Thank you very much. Sam Ford reporting to us live from Reagan National. We have another eyewitness on the phone right now. His name is Charles Tanner. Mr. Tanner, yes, tell sir, right us what here. you saw. Uh, I was in the, uh, I, I live at the Overlook Apartments, and I was uh, doing some exercises, jump roping, and the plane came ex increasingly fast, uh, almost looks like they, uh, if it was it headed this direction, hit the building that I'm in, which is an eight-story building, but it was aiming for the, uh, 
in the direction of the Pentagon, and then all of a sudden I see this puff of smoke, and I just ran over to Columbia so you didn't actually get a better view of it. So, Charles, you didn't actually see it hit. You just saw it to a point, and then you saw I, the smoke. I just, I just saw this plane coming very, very fast, going in that direction as I was listening to you guys, you guys talk about what happened at the World Trade Center. And, and where you live, obviously, it's close enough to Reagan National, but that's not uh, a flight yeah, path a, you normally see. Right. Well, I'm closer to the Pentagon than to Reagan National. Okay, but obviously planes flying over there uh, on a not, daily not, basis. This is usually not the flight path for right. any aircraft. Um, Mr. Tanner, we do have more information about exactly where that plane crashed. We understand right now from the AP that it crashed near a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon. So as far as we know, it didn't crash directly into the Pentagon. From where you are, Mr. Tanner, are you okay? Are you safe? Oh, oh uh, well, and this course the plane decides to hit this building. Yes, I think I'm very safe. Um, can, uh, you, can you believe that this is happening in Washington, D.C., Mr. Tanner? I want to say yes and no, okay, because of uh, different terrorist activities and things of that nature and because of what happened to the World Trade Center, uh, I would say that it doesn't surprise me. Uh, uh, I'm just a little shaken that it has happened. And, I, and I'm not sure when we talk about that helicopter pad, if it's the one that's on the west side where you run by, you drive by all the time on the Rings Main Street that you can see if there's another one there as well that a lot of folks go by yeah. them on a daily basis. We quickly and want to recap before we turn to, return it to uh, ABC News. The State Department has now been evacuated. The White House has been evacuated. The Capitol has been evacuated. There was a credible threat to the mansion, which I'm talking about the White House here. And so the entire White House has now been evacuated. Of course, this all started in New York about 8.40. We want to go back to ABC News and allow them to continue their coverage of this entire and unbelievable uh, incident that's, that's going on. I'm Don Hudson along with Carol Costello. We send it now back to ABC News. Um, just before 9 o'clock, and the second one was after that. And, John Miller, you're listening. Um, actually, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's, no, there's no way to characterize any part of this as fortunate, but if you look at cities who are prepared to handle an incident like this, um, and as you've seen New York's emergency response to this, it is probably one of the few places that is, that is prepared with the kind of equipment, response, and rescue efforts that could actually address something like this, and Washington is probably the other. Um, immediately when this happened, the entire emergency service unit, which comprises hundreds of specially trained cops, was mobilized to the scene. Now a triage center, um, a triage center uh, for the injured has been set up just around the corner from the World Trade Center. It's um, an incredible scene down there with a tremendous amount of equipment. Um, the Federal Aviation Administration has actually gone even further than it did a few minutes ago. It, it was uh, forming all, asking all planes not to take off. Now the FAA has ordered all aircraft currently in the air over the United States to land at the nearest airport. Now you can imagine what may be happening or what they think might be happening in some part of the country that there is somebody else on some aircraft coming from somewhere or going somewhere <clears throat> with evil in their with evil intentions and so all aircraft currently in the air over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. I think one of the hang, hang on a sec, John, I just want to check one thing because um, one of the very first people the president talked to was the director of the FBI and Pierre Thomas, who covers the Justice Department and the FBI for us, has been here. Um, they may think they prepare for this kind of thing, Pierre, but man, it must have been a shock. Stunning shock. Uh, the FBI Special Operations Center is now in full alert. The FBI mm. extremely concerned that there would be additional att attacks. Normally when you have a situation like this, they immediately get on the line with the CIA, the various intelligence agencies, trying to get a sense of who might have been planning something. But right now, the first order of business is to protect against a second attack, third attack. The feeling is normally when you have this kind of situation, there will be more attacks almost immediately. Let's go to the Trade Tower again because, John, we now have... I, what do we have? We don't... Wow. It looks like a, a new plume, a new large plume of smoke. Now, it may be that something fell off the building. It may be that something has fallen. We, we don't know, to be perfectly honest. But that is what you're looking at, is the current... That, that's the scene at this moment at the World Trade Center. Dan Daler from ABC's Good Morning America is down 
uh, in, in the general vicinity. Dan, can you tell us what has just happened? Yes, Peter, it's, it's Don Dealer down here, four blocks north of the World Trade Center. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off. When you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it My folded God. down on itself and it is not there anymore. That should be it. It Thanks has very completely much, collapsed. The whole side has collapsed? The whole there? building has collapsed. The I whole looking, building has collapsed? The building has collapsed. That's the southern tower you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. The second building that we witnessed the airplane enter had been, the top half had been fully involved in flame. It just collapsed. There is panic on the streets. Thousands of people running up Church Street, which is what I'm looking out on, trying to get away. But the entire, at least as far as I can see, the top half of the building, at least half of it, I can't see below that, half of it just started with a gigantic rumble, folded in on itself, and collapsed in a huge plume of smoke and dust. We are talking about massive casualties here at the moment, and we have, whew, That is extraordinary. There is panic on the streets. There are people screaming and running from the site. The gigantic plume of smoke has reached me, and I'm probably a quarter of a mile north of there. Peter. Now this is a, this is what it looked like moments ago. My God. Southern Tower, 10 o'clock Eastern Time this morning, just collapsing on itself. This is a place where thousands of people work. We have no idea what caused this. Um, if you wish to bring uh, anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the, at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. Peter? Yes, Dan. Uh, what, what appeared to happen from my vantage point, the top part of the building was totally involved in fire, and there, was, it, there appeared to be no effort possible to put that fire out. It looked like the top part of the building was so weakened by the fire that it just the weight of it collapsed the rest of the building. That's what appeared to happen. I did not see anything happening at the base of the building. It all appeared to start at the top and then just collapse the rest of the building by the sheer weight of the top. There was no explosion or anything at the base part of it, but I, I did see that the top part of it started to, to collapse. The walls started to bulge out, bricks, glass things coming, coming out, and then it collapsed in on itself, and it appeared to just fold down from there, from the very top. Thanks, Don, very much. Um, just looking at that, I don't know why, but I'm, yeah. when was the last time the United States was attacked in this fashion? It was Pearl Harbor in 1941. Um, from the scene now, uh, there's obviously ma massive casualties. Uh, usually during these things, there's a, a little bit of a high pitch, but basic calm over the police radios uh, among the emergency workers. Um, I can hear them screaming, uh, signal 1013, uh, which is the police code for help, uh, calling for help at the triage center, where other people who are already injured have been injured more, um, confirming that the the building has collapsed, uh, dozens of officers, more civilians are injured, and we don't know, although I'd have to suggest, given the size of that building, what progress the evacuation was in um, of the tower that uh, collapsed. Yes, uh, Pierre, Pierre Thomas. Uh, one thing I might add is that in recent years, the U.S. government has been preparing for massive attacks, but it's been primarily focused on biological, often, mm -hmm. often bombing attacks. One of the things I have not heard discussed at all in government circles is the notion that someone would hijack a plane and perhaps fly it into a building. So one of the questions that I'm sure that will come out of this, if this indeed is a terrorist attack, is what kind of defenses did the U.S. have in place to deal with an event like this? Well, we talked about that even, Pierre, just before you came and joined us, because at the Emergency Management Center, which is just literally in the same complex as the Trade Towers, 
they talk at great length about their preparations for a biological, a chemical warfare attack, how they closed tunnel. I mean, they've been very efficient, taken it very seriously for many years. I'd be a little surprised if the notion of an airborne attack on a United States target had not been had not been discussed, but the notion of the intelligence services knowing absolutely nothing of what is going on today and saying openly right away they had no warnings whatsoever uh, is, and you say something very important, if this is a, and you say something very important, if this is a terrorist attack, we just keep saying that in a repeated basis, um, not having any notion whatsoever of what's going on is to be reminded not only of the efficiency of terrorism, but it just reminded the efficiency of terrorism. At it's, this uh, it's ironic. There's a, there's a chilling story. Uh, Lou Shalero of the FBI, um, who was part of the capture of Ramzi Youssef, who was the mastermind of the World last Trade bombing of the World Trade Center, told me this story that he was flying over the World Trade Center in a helicopter with the suspect Ramzi Youssef next to him after he was captured in Pakistan. And as they passed over, Lou Shalero uh, nudged him and said to Ramzi Yosef, uh, you see, it's still standing. And Ramzi Yosef smiled and said to the FBI's assistant director, it wouldn't be if I'd had more money. Um, this was... In other words, more money to buy explosives, more money to run a more efficient operation than the one he ran from New Jersey in 93. Exactly. And I mean, we may have seen uh, the second coming of that plan. Uh, John McCrethy is on the phone at the Pentagon. Oh, look, let me just... John McCarthy, we've now heard reports that three planes have been hijacked today. Can you confirm that? Jack McCarthy at the Pentagon. Okay, then let me go quickly to someone named Don Wright, who saw the plane crash into the Pentagon. Don, are you there in Washington? Yes, I am. Can you tell us what happened? Yes, it was about 9.35, and I was looking out our 12th floor windows at 1600 Wilson Boulevard in uh, Roslyn, Virginia, and I watched this. It looked like a commuter plane, two engine, come down from the south, real low, uh, proceed right on and crashed right into the uh, Pentagon. Went directly into the Pentagon? Uh, that is correct. Looked like a deliberate act? A deliberate act, sir. And can you tell me what direction it came from, Don? Came, it came from the south. Came from the south, up along the river, across the land? It came, it came from the south. Okay, and do you, do, did you happen to look at your watch? To, we thought it was just a little bit before 10 o'clock. Well, I was watching ABC News, watching the uh, Twin Tower, uh, and about the, and about the time I saw the plane, I watched it come in very low over the trees, and it just dipped down, came down right over 395, right into the Pentagon. And are you fairly sure that it was what we sometimes describe and recognize as a yes, small commuter plane? Uh, yes, it was. Good, Don. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. You're Don very Wright, welcome. an eyewitness to the crash at the Pentagon. Now, we have had, as I said, reports today. There are hundreds of reports flying around, and so we beg your indulgence on us saying as often as we do, these are reports. They're sometimes unconfirmed. They're sometimes confirmed. We'll try to make it absolutely clear what we absolutely know and what we're uncertain about. There are now reports around of three aircraft having been hijacked today. So we have at least, because we've now had eyewitnesses to three de apparently deliberate uh, aerial assaults involving the aircraft themselves, two on the Trade Towers in New York City and one on the Pentagon itself, just described by Don Wright as a small two-engine commuter plane which came up from the south. And we now believe that three planes were hijacked, two of them from Boston and one from somewhere else. We are not yet sure uh, precisely what's happened. Um, John, you're listening. Uh, just to uh, clarify for people, John, who's a uh, who's uh, our, one of our leading reporters on crime, uh, knows New York City probably better than anybody in, in many news divisions. Uh, I cannot tell you where that happens. That's either a U.S. Uh, uh, Air Force or Navy aircraft, uh, fighter aircraft, uh, now on patrol in what we've described as the no-fly zone uh, over New York City today, lest there be one more attempt. John, go ahead. Uh, they've continued evacuations in the area now. They've, they're evacuating Battery Park City, which is a large apartment complex, uh, taking up many blocks across the street from the World Trade Center. And uh, they've evacuated the federal court buildings where the terrorism trials of Ramzi Youssef and others were held. Uh, anything that could be a symbolic target is now being emptied out in New York. New York is, is going into kind of a lockdown mode. I think you'll also see in Washington the same kind of air patrols 
have been uh, scrambled around uh, principal buildings there. Okay. We have on the phone one of those people who, who uh, makes his living analyzing terrorism. Um, Kyle Olson, do you hear me? Yes, I do. I, I, I wonder if on a day like this anybody wants to be thought of as an expert on terrorism. Um, be that as it may, and assuming that and knowing that much of the country is shocked at the uh, apparent breadth of this, are you? Well, you know, this is, a, this is the, the kind of thing that, uh, that has fallen more into Tom Clancy novels than into, uh, into actual response planning. Um, having said that, we've been anticipating for a long time. We've wondered why it's been so relatively quiet. Uh, the, act, the suggestions of Osama bin Laden's involvement, what has he been doing since coal? Uh, other other groups out there with uh, with a, a real or imagined grudge against the United States. Uh, the nature of the event is shocking. The uh, the fact that it's happened is not. Thank you very much, Kyle. Really appreciate it, Kyle Olson. Yeah, one uh, one quick thing. Yeah, go ahead. One quick thing. The accus the suggestions that are floating around out there right now. There's apparently this claim from the uh, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine. Right. Um, very interesting to yes, know. If, if this is if this is legitimate, if this is, if this claim stands up, this appears to be okay. the first time this group has targeted Americans. This group has primarily steered away from the more extreme end of the of the violence scale. They focused less on suicide bombings, more on uh, more on on gun attacks and and that sort of thing in the territories against Israelis. Well, if, if it, this it, holds it, up, this is a different this is a very different tactic. Well, it. if it is true, and of course the Democratic Front for Liberation Palestine was very much involved in attacking aircraft in the 1970s. Uh -huh which carried Americans. So certainly let's accept your notion that it's a recent attack on, on Americans. Thank you, Kyle, very much. You bet. Um, uh, as, as Mr. Olson makes clear, there has been at least one claim, and those of us who cover this for a very long period of time are always suspicious of claims. Uh, people who cover international terrorism. I'm going to interrupt myself. Linda Douglas, our Capitol Hill correspondent, I think is on the phone, and if she's not she already reports there has been an explosion of some kind at the Capitol. Is Linda Douglas on the telephone? Uh, let's get her on the phone as quickly as we have. She just reported a couple of minutes ago that the leaders of the Congress, uh, Senator Lott, Senator Daschle, the Republican and Democratic leaders uh, in the Senate, had been taken to some un or have been taken to some undisclosed, secure location. Um, our general assumption is that there's no panic involved in this. That somebody in the capitol building as someone in the washington in the white house has a book which says that when these things happen here thomas maybe you can confirm this for me when these these things happen there are certain modalities which you behave and as you see the hierarchy of the american political establishment the military establishment being attacked you want to protect the chain of command absolutely the first thing they try to do is get everyone in secure positions so they can gather information and um, make decisions about what to do next. Uh, one of the things that law enforcement officials had been planning for is the notion of a multi-tiered attack, uh, an attack occurring in multiple places simultaneously. Because one of the things they've talked about is that terrorists want to project more fear, as much fear as possible. And one of the ways you can do it is to have this notion that attacks are happening on multiple fronts. Yeah, well, and, and there, we've never seen anything like this before in the United States, of course. And, and in fact, not seen anything like this in my record. I've been doing this for 30 some odd years. I don't recall any multitude of attack. We've had two or three, we've had two suicide bombers within a, in a short period of time in the Middle East. Uh, we had the two embassies uh, in Africa. Uh, in Kenya and in Tanzania, the attack two summers ago in the United States. But the notion that uh, the terrorists, either an organization or organizations, plural, uh, should be able to mount a concerted effort against the United States in this way, causing in this instance so many casualties, in the, in the instance of the Trade Tower, certainly so many casualties, is, is going to astound people in the political and military and, and intelligence establishment absolutely the notion that you could have multiple attacks like this they have been planning for it they had not seen it um, this is a extraordinary escalation one that they were they were predicting would happen but no one would think that it would happen this quickly okay John Miller I think uh, let me just interrupt I sure. apologize again we're now looking at a, a helicopter over the Pentagon that makes perfect sense this morning but given the fact that we're all sensitive to the presence of any aircraft uh, that was a helicopter that just flew across the screen. That is, uh, and as we had one, at least one eyewitness said this was an attack on the Pentagon from the south. He described it quite confidently as resembling a commuter aircraft. 
which is to say smaller than a small private aircraft and not as large as a commercial jet. It may have been a, a prop jet. Um, it may have been a jet, but it's a smaller version of the jets which so many people in so many middle-sized American cities are now accustomed to seeing. In terms of the realm of terrorism, this is going to be a real uh, first test, uh, literally by fire, for the Bush administration. You recall after the embassy bombings in East Africa, uh, the Clinton administration uh, waited about 10 days and launched a missile attack against the camps of Osama bin Laden, who they felt confident at that time they could say was responsible for it and who's since been charged in it. Uh, in this case, I think this ratchets up. Uh, Excuse me. This is the Pentagon we're looking at now, according to my, uh, according to my monitor. And again, it is hard to, to grasp what part of the building. We do not know if they're in the courtyard or outside, but you can see that a fairly considerable amount of damage has been done. We do not know whether these are offices or storage areas. The Pentagon is full of uh, many thousands of people uh, every day. The Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, has been saying only yesterday and today that he wants to reduce the... Uh, the bloatedness, as he put it, uh, as he alluded to it in the military and the bureaucracy. But this is the great home of the of the military. But this is the great home of the of the military bureaucratic establishment. Um, John, before I come back to you, uh, Dennis Cross is on the phone. Dennis, do you hear me? Dennis Cross, do you hear me? Yes, I can. Peter. Dennis, I understand that you were in the World Trade Center when either this or these attacks occurred? Am yeah, I correct? That's, that's correct. It was, uh, I guess it was slightly before 9 o'clock, and uh, I work on the 36th floor in One World Trade Center. I work for in the insurance industry. Probably hundreds of people uh, in my industry uh, in both of these two buildings. And what was ha what happened? Um, as I was... Uh, hey, Dennis, just let me stop for a second. Um, somebody is trying another telephone on this line. Could they please not do that while we listen to Mr. Cross? Thanks. Go ahead, Mr. Cross. Go ahead, Dennis. Uh, essentially, I was, uh, you know, sort of at my desk working, general office activity, and uh, felt an enormous... Uh, so I it almost felt like an earthquake. Like, I could literally feel and see things in the office moving and the floor moving. Um, immediately after what it was some sort of explosion or something uh, there was an enormous volume of debris and paper it almost looked like a dirty parade uh, all of this material just falling down I, I was looking out the uh, south side of the uh, of one world trade and uh, everybody in the office was kind of screaming kind of gathering in the middle and I went to the window and uh, I immediately saw one woman uh, who appeared to be motionless, uh, laying on the roof of the of a, you know a lower building next to me. Um, at that point, everybody started to gather the things. They were trying to evacuate people down the stairwell. And what, did the light? Did the electricity go out in the building? Uh, the lights flickered, flickered a couple of times, and then it was weird. It was kind of like there was there was one uh, one sort of rush, and then shortly after that there was another one i don't know if it was uh, maybe the other tower or if there were uh elevators in the inside of it uh you know sort of just dropping to the floor are, are you aware that, that that one of the twin trade towers has now collapsed on itself uh yeah i'm i'm about uh probably five blocks from there on the corner of greenwich and warren and, and as we as we looked at it on the screen here dennis we could see uh the smoke from this collapse just sweep the billow forward through the lower blocks of Manhattan. Did you have a sense of that? Completely. I was, uh, at that point, I'm, I'm a little bit northwest, it's certainly north, maybe to the west side of uh, uh, Tower 1, and I was trying to get to Broadway. Uh, my wife works on the other side of downtown here. Uh, I'm still trying to get there, but the smoke, mm. I literally, I couldn't mm. see. It was a wall of smoke, and if you were in it, you couldn't see. If you were out of it, you could just see the wall of smoke. It was, how how never difficult? Seen I'm sorry for interrupting. How difficult was the evacuation? <clears throat> I'm sorry, say that again, Peter? How difficult was, was it to evacuate the building from at least from the 30... Maybe 110 stories in the building. It, I would say that it wasn't, it wasn't extremely difficult. It was just uh, slow going down a somewhat narrow stairwell. With light, if there was any sort of, uh, you know, people who weren't able to move quickly, then it, it literally slowed down or stopped everybody. Um, I was on 36, so it wasn't too terrible when I got down to, you know, the 15th or 12th floor or so. Uh, there was water coming in from the doors, you know, kind of at our feet level. Uh, and then it just was a waterfall down all of the, continually down all of the stairs, probably, you know, in some cases three, four inches deep. At that point, sirens and alarms were going off. 
Uh, and then people started to get a little frantic there. Dennis, thank you very much. Okay, sure. I really appreciate you calling in. You're Dennis Krauss, who, uh, who works, uh, on, or did work, on the, on the 36th floor of the World Trade Center uh, in this particular tower, which is still standing. There's only one of the trade towers now standing, the other having collapsed on itself um, uh, not long ago. All of the federal office buildings in Washington have now been evacuated. All federal buildings in Washington have now been evacuated. All aircraft in the skies over the United States have been ordered to land at the nearest airport. Uh, all aircraft on the ground intending to go anywhere have been ordered not to take off uh, because the country, this is the Pentagon, because we've just seen a moment ago that at least one portion of one side or building at the Pentagon itself uh, has actually uh, collapsed. <clears throat> and as we warned you, the whole business of responsibility, claiming of and naming responsibility would be complicated. And now we've, uh, from, from the Middle East, a senior official from the, from the Democratic Front for the Liberation of Palestine has denied any uh, involvement, any connection to a double plane crash on the World Trade Center. It was, in fact, earlier on an anonymous caller who had called Abu Dhabi Television <clears throat> to say that the uh, the DFLP was responsible. So for today, we'll put this, uh, aside as best we can the uh, trying to understand who did it, just knowing uh, somebody who did it. Now, uh, one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center was, uh, as, we, as we said some while ago, American Airlines Flight 11 from Boston, Boston to Los Angeles. Uh, that has now been confirmed by the airline itself. Um, or at least by their spokesperson, Lori Bassani. Um, it was a Boeing 767. It would, under normal circumstances, if it were full, carry about 160 passengers, including two pilots, nine or ten crew, but we have no idea yet whether or not the plane was heavily loaded or not. Peter, a uh, big concern now from the scene that the Northwest mm -hmm. Tower, the one remaining standing, is, is leaning over. and uh, buckling in the, uh, in the Northwest corner. Um, they're moving back the mobilization areas and they're cordoning off the area in a much wider zone now because obviously they're, they are now concerned about the possibility of a second collapse. I, I'm still desperately confused, John, about what may have caused the building to, to collapse. Um, As you watch <clears throat> the videotape, it appeared to buckle from the middle, from the point of <clears throat> impact and, um, and collapse, which uh, not, you know, with no background in architecture. I don't know about the structural vulnerability, but as you, as you see, debris just starts to, to peel fall, away. then it cracks, and then it just goes straight down. And now uh, they say that the, the other tower is leaning. Um, if you look at some of the pictures, it appears to be on a slight angle uh, to the right. Yeah, they, uh, they say the fire is also spreading downward now through the tower. And I, I think there's a real decision to make there. I have not been able to, to hear whether they're keeping people in there to fight that fire or they're just leaving it empty to let the fire burn itself out because they're going to have a real problem with people in there if it's in jeopardy. At the same time, uh, New York firefighters have a reputation of staying until the very end. And if there are civilians in that building which need to be rescued, and clearly there are, then there's no way the emergency services, I can imagine, are going to, to uh, pull out at this point. Tell and me. if the elevators are disabled uh, from that height, there's no fast way out. Precisely. 110 stories uh, down, and this appears to have occurred, this, did, this, this occurred about two-thirds of the way up. ABC's John McQuethy now confirms for us, we've had from an eyewitness, or he adds to our eyewitness, uh, saying uh, that a small plane heading north, which is exactly what our eyewitness, um, a little earlier, uh, told us, uh, exploded at the base of the Pentagon, at the base of one wing of the Pentagon. They evacuated everyone inside, and there was a subsequent concern, which may have led to the FAA decision to ground everything, uh, that there was concern that another plane uh, might be inbound uh, towards the Pentagon. And by grounding everything, of course, by ordering everything to be grounded on all radio channels to all aircraft that are flying in the area, it puts the military, uh, Pierre Thomas confirmed for me, it puts the military in a position to take aggressive action 
uh, as the White House did when that when that uh, when other aircraft have come close in the past. Absolutely, absolutely. What it allows them to do is to get a better sense of incoming. If you're ordering everything down, you're essentially clearing the sky so the Pentagon can see what's coming in. Another question that they have to look at here is whether any of these planes might have been laced with explosives to cause the additional collateral damage once the impact occurred. Yeah, these, these in every instance, well, I shouldn't say in every instance, certainly in the instance of the Pentagon, it looks more than a single aircraft just exploding on the ground. But again, we don't know precisely the size of the aircraft. Um, we won't speculate on that. But Lisa Stark, who covers aviation for us, confirmed that it was American Flight 11 to Los Angeles. There were 90 passengers and crew on board. Um, and there was a second plane. Help me understand this not. So we believe that the two aircraft have flown into the trade towers. Both belonged to American Airlines. And they had both been hijacked, and there were 90 passengers and crew on the first plane and 60 passengers and crew on the second plane. That is the, if there's any doubt about that, someone please contradict me, but that is the report I am getting from our people who cover the Federal Aviation Administration and air travel in general, that there were two aircraft hijacked for this attack on the twin trade towers, now the single trade tower in New York City, and on the first, they were both flights to the west coast from Boston. And the first one had 90 people and a crew on board. And the second had 60 passengers and crew on board. A big passengers and crew on board. I beg your pardon. The second plane was not hijacked from Boston, but from American, from Dallas Airport, we're being told, which of course is outside Washington. And we do not know if that was the let me just, I'm going to make this absolutely clear because this reporting is muggy. We, we, we've now reports of two planes from American Airlines, one from Boston, Flight 11 to Los Angeles, which we believe is one of the aircraft that went to the Trade Towers. We have a second plane, American Airlines Dulles to Los Angeles with 60 passengers and crew, and that is certainly bigger than a small commuter aircraft, so it may also have been involved in the new thing. We'll do our best to, uh, to hand that down as well. Um, Senior law enforcement officials in Washington now tell us that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. That's a, uh, it's a report uh, now from uh, the Associated Press, uh, about to confirm it with our own people at the State Department, though everybody in Washington has been evacuated from their buildings. Um, but a car bomb has now exploded outside the State Department. And John Miller, I see you writing quite frantically on something else. It's uh, at the scene now at the World Trade Center because of the concerns of the structural stability of the remaining tower, a temporary headquarters mobilization point triage center was set up at Stuyvesant High School, which is about uh, uh, two and a half blocks up and slightly across the street. Um, now, the, uh, now the concern is that if the building falls, if the second building falls, that it will be falling in that direction. So they are now evacuating their own command post and triage center and they have to find an even further zone to move that to. Something that is striking about this today is that this is indicative of, with a car bomb at the State Department, a plane crash into the Pentagon. Two planes designated to crash into each tower of the World Trade Center, bringing one down. It, it connotes the, the level of planning and sophistication and um, extreme logistical ability that, that, that probably makes this singularly uh, the largest, most well-coordinated act of terrorism, uh, not just in U.S. history, but probably in modern, in, times. In modern times. Yeah, and, Unprecedented. And, and, it's and, gonna I, be and every time you say that, I'm going to go immediately to Washington now, but every time you say that, I keep thinking of how we are told time and time and time again by the Pentagon and by the State Department that they know something's going Stand on by, in the uh, world today. They seem to have the North problem at the North Tower, uh, Peter. Let's look at the North, North Tower, Tower quickly, seems quickly. To be coming down. Oh my God. The second, the second tower. Oh, it's hard to put it into words, and maybe one doesn't need to. Both trade towers where thousands of people work on this day, Tuesday, 
have now been attacked and destroyed with thousands of people either in them or in the immediate area adjacent to them. This is, there is simply no way to accurately describe the emotion this evokes in people all over the world, friends of the United States and enemies of the United States as well. John Miller, very briefly, you said to us just a few minutes ago that this was their concern, that they thought after the first tower went that the second one was vulnerable. There was uh, constant intelligence that uh, terrorist organizations and uh, specifically that financed by Osama bin Laden was trying to mount another series of attacks against the United States. Of course, they thought of the symbolic t targets. The most symbolic was the World Trade Center because it had been attacked yet not brought down. And um, it seems that those concerns that even caused the World Trade Center to hire a senior FBI counterterrorism official just weeks ago to try and beef up security um, have come home to roost. It's also interesting to say that there is no type of security. Which would have prevented against this today. Well, that's, that may not, that's, I'm going to say that may not be able to be true because security operates in waves and concentric circles out around the world. Now we've lost the picture from there, so now we have it again. Um, well, wh wherever you are in the United States or in the world today, you can, the landscape of New York City has just been changed. And one has to assume that thousands of lives have been extinguished. And it may be presumptuous to say thousands, but thousands of people work in these buildings. And it, and we, and, and given the difficulties of evacuating these buildings where, as we've said several times, the operate, the elevators may not have been operating and we're not operating in at least one tower, tower number two, the first one which is to go. Um, that is the second attack on the southern tower, the first higher on this end of the tower, but both those towers have now, have now, have now gone. And here's what, here's is here's a picture that doesn't exist anymore because that's not a live picture anymore. The, uh, Just now, can I ask where this picture is from? Do we know where this is? This, this is uh, this is this know? is outside the World Trade Center. The sign uh, indicates the approach to the, uh, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. Bridge. To the Brooklyn Bridge. So we're. So we're on West Street, approximately uh, just north of VC Street there. And you can see the dust and debris. And this is at, I don't know if this is at an early stage or whether this is, is right now. It's at an early stage because there in the distance you can see the, at least one of the towers still standing as people wander many of them dazed and look at the cell phones in their ears this is in a cell phone society and it's certainly true in the Middle East people on their cell phones all the time seeking and offering reassurance to their families and their friends that something has happened in Israel and, and at least those with Heather in the Palestinian territories these days there's constant traffic on the on the cell phones because there is such tension in the region and such tension here today which is extraordinary the people wanting everywhere to reassure or find out about what has happened to those who are near and dear to them. Uh, one thing we should update for people listening, particularly in this area, who may have been worried, uh, there was a concern that if this building... You mean in the New York City area? Yes. There was a concern if this building fell that it would land on uh, 
the center they had set up at Stuyvesant High School where the, the students were still there. The reports from Stuyvesant High School now are that uh, everybody there is okay. Stuyvesant High School, the high school in the adjacent area which the, the city and the state authorities set up uh, to deal with the casualties that they could get out of the building or had occurred uh, adjacent to the building. It is just clear that a lot of people, we do not know how many, uh, got out of the building. And it is going to take time. It is going to take time. The New York City Office of Emergency Management, um, which monitors the city and all its vulnerable points, said when this whole thing began this morning, they could not get an immediate handle on, on precisely uh, what was happening. And it was only... You've seen this before. This is a, this is a recording of of precisely what happened when the second tower went down. And this is from a very long distance. This camera is located on the edge of the Hudson River on, on, on the west side drive up the western side of Manhattan. And I cannot say this is something that people never believed they would see in the United States because, of course, Oklahoma City was when we all had that reaction when Americans experienced terrorism in the heartland for the first time, believing in many cases that it all happened somewhere else. Um, but I, but, but I just think that millions of Americans will be stunned by the magnitude of this today. Um, I'm trying to track down John McCarthy, our correspondent at the Pentagon. He was evacuated. I'm saying this as much to our control rooms, anybody. Um, he, like everybody else, was evacuated. And I'd also like to talk, if I may, to Claire Shipman at the at the White House um, to see what the progression is there and Linda Douglas at Capitol Hill and because we do know that the leadership of the Senate at least Senator Daschle were moved to a secure location uh, while much of this was going on but it is very difficult to get through on anybody's cell phone and this is Pierre Thomas another reminder of you wonder if this is something that people anticipate we now live in the age of cell phone we now rely on cell phones for so much when there's chaos like this too many people on the cell phones they don't work well, one of the things that they had to deal with today, Attorney General Ashcroft was in route to uh, Milwaukee today. And now with the planes grounded, he's going to have to communicate by phone. Uh, they have an inter, uh, internal communication system at the Justice Department that they use in situations like this, video monitors. But again, everyone is dispersed, and with the planes grounded, this created a scenario that they, had, quite frankly, hadn't seen before. It is the grounding of the planes which pretty much brings to a halt. I mean, one assumes that Air Force One, with the president, is already on its way back to Florida. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. ABC's John McCarthy is on a cell phone at the moment, and while he cannot hear me, somebody can tell him to start talking, please, and we'll listen. Okay, we'll try that again. Anytime John McCarthy <coughs> begins to talk and tell us what's happening at the Pentagon, or as much as he knows what's happening at the Pentagon, we will simply uh, let him go. But uh, it's just very difficult to get through on cell phones. Thousands of people trying to find out where their, where their friends and their relatives are. Thousands of, of uh, reporters, uh, uh, news organizations, uh, city organizations, state organizations, federal organizations, trying to understand um, not only what happened today, which in some respects is secondary, but to get something done. Um, and there's just so much agitation around. You get a report just a couple of moments ago from, from the security at the Capitol Police saying that they believe a hijacked plane <coughs> may be bound for the Capitol. Um, it's, it's, it, there's an intensity in the air um, and a fear and a trauma in the air at... Uh, at 20 minutes to 11 Eastern time in the United States, 20 minutes to 8 on the West Coast, or in the Western part of the United States, the day has just getting beginning, and all of this has happened in um, under, just under an hour. The first attack on the Trade Tower was uh, just before 10 o'clock. The second one came at, at three minutes after 10. We have a strike on the Pentagon, which came uh, a little after that, and the country is just riddled nine o'clock nine o'clock nine o'clock i'm sorry uh the country's just um overrun as it's inevitable it would be with with, with rumors uh, i'm curious john in terms of the of the emergency operation that you monitor uh, are, are they in a sense of panic are they in a or just in a sense of chaos 
uh, in a sense of chaos. Uh, there was a, a brief sense of panic, which is understandable, when the first tower collapsed. By the time the second tower collapsed, they were prepared for it. Uh, there were numerous other injuries. The level of coordination is incredible. The FDR Drive, which is a main artery, has been shut down for the purpose of um, keeping it clear for ambulances to go to uh, hospitals. Uh, they've anticipated that the lower, Manha lower Manhattan hospitals in New York City will fill up, so they have started to uh, arrange uh, helicopter flights to go to hospitals further out in the circle. Um, they've, really been, they've really been pretty well coordinated throughout this. If you can possibly be coordinated uh, during a series of spontaneous events that amount to disaster. This is war, and, and war by, uh, and by another definition. One of the we, did manage to get, we did manage to get Rebecca Cooper, one of our reporters, on the phone from the White House. That's how difficult it is uh, at the moment to communicate. Rebecca, do you hear me? Rebecca Cooper at the White House, do you hear me? All right, the same case with Rebecca says with John McCrethy at the Pentagon. If we do hear from them, we'll simply interrupt and let them, uh, let them uh, get Hello? on talking. Yeah, Rebecca, do you hear me? Yes, Peter, I hear you. I'm in the basement of the 815 Connecticut Avenue. It's a building across uh, the block from the White House, across the park. It's, you know where that is, next to the Chamber of Commerce. I had to come down here because, as you said, none of the cell phones are working. I'm in the engineer's office, and they've given us our, their phones to use. There's a real dichotomy here at the White House, Peter. Tourists who still are not fully aware of what's happening across the nation are standing there watching with curiosity. They keep getting moved back. But those of us who were inside the White House realized the severity of the situation. I was inside the White House this morning trying to gather information for you when we were told by a very nervous uh, White House security staff that they feared a plane was headed to the White House, and we heard planes indeed overhead, and they quickly evacuated all of us out of the White House. Now, I just got off the phone with my own uh, crying mother who was very worried about where I was, and I will tell other mothers and fathers of people who work at the White House and reporters who work at the White House that most of the White House has been evacuated. In fact, in the building where I am now, uh, people have cordoned up other offices to try and coordinate the federal response to this. There are actually phone calls being placed to the legal counsel of the FAA from this building because they don't have cell phone connections. They are out of their offices. They are doing a good job of coordinating the federal response from here, but they are having to take all kinds of emergency measures to coordinate this response. But even uh, the White House chef, who just days ago was preparing a lovely state dinner for President Fox of Mexico, I saw him and I tried to speak to him. And frankly, Peter, he was too rattled. He said he couldn't speak and uh, he was with his staff and they were all very anxious and very worried because, of course, they did know what's going on in the country today. Many thanks, Rebecca Cooper. And if you just see that picture that was going by as Rebecca was talking, you get a real sense of what the urgency was in the White House. First of all, the, you know, the White House police came walking out and then people began to run out of the White House. Um, in and of itself, astonishingly uh, astonishing, because we we live with the notion that if there is any place in the United States which is which is fiercely protected, including um, an anti-aircraft battery, at least one on the roof of the White House itself, this is the place where the president and the vice president, of course, are to be secure. Claire Shipman is on the phone from the White House. Claire, we are now looking at. At, at what appear to be fairly relaxed uh, uh, security officers on the roof of the White House, uh, looking at the in the distance as they always do, talking occasionally to each other. There doesn't seem to be a high level of tension there. What's it like on the ground? Well, there's considerable tension on the ground, Peter. We are actually looking at a similar picture because we're across the street from the White House now in the Hay Adams Hotel. Um, the entire area around the White House has been completely evacuated. It's very quiet. The police seem tense. They're carrying automatic weapons. Um, we've also seen a couple of what appear to be fighter jets overhead. Uh, everybody in this area has been sent home from all major government offices. It's all a reverse commute. The highways we're told are just jammed. As you know, President Bush is on his way back to the White House. They've checked his plane considerably before um, sending him on his way. But as you mentioned, these guys on top of the White House roof are almost always here. And ever since that incident a few years ago, when a plane actually landed on the White House lawn, they've upped security measures so that they wouldn't have any other aircraft nearby. Uh, and that may be why they seem a little more relaxed than other areas around town. As you know, the AP has been reporting that um, there was a car bomb that went off at the State Department, and uh, a lot of people are talking about that. 
uh, and, and there's also been some report that there were bomb threats on Capitol Hill, but we're still trying to find out more about that, Peter. Thanks very much, Claire. There are indeed reports from the Federal Aviation Administration uh, that, that there are possibly one or two more planes that have been hijacked this morning and are still missing. When you think of the number of aircraft that crisscross the United States, not to mention fly overseas every day, uh, this is the Pentagon. This is the Pentagon. This is live coverage from the Pentagon now, which gives you some sense of the force with which this aircraft, described to us as a, as a small commuter-sized aircraft, uh, flew into a side of the Pentagon um, coming from the south this morning. And again, we, uh, the communications in the country are so, uh, are so difficult at the moment, and as you've heard from, beginning to hear from everybody, the cell phone network uh, is choked uh, for a variety of reasons, that it's hard to get a handle at this point on on um, uh, casualties at the Pentagon or the extent of damage. The one place on which it is, in which we can be focused because it is such a small place, Manhattan, 11 miles long, uh, um, is the Twin Trade Towers. And, and by some remote chance, if you've just joined us on television, the Twin Trade Towers in New York City have been destroyed with hundreds, presumably, or perhaps thousands of people in them. Each of the two towers was struck today, attacked today uh, by an aircraft, one of which at least we know was hijacked. And this is the second tower that went just uh, uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, a scene of chaos and devastation uh, in, in, lower, in, in the lower part of New York City, right on the edge of the Hudson River. Everybody in the United States is familiar with the Twin Trade Towers. And, and, and we have no idea what, uh, whether there were tourists there who sh show up every morning to go and stand on the top of the Trade Towers because it is one of the most expansive views uh, southwest and north uh, of the city and the area itself. Bill Blakemore is down there. Bill, do you hear me? I do, Peter. Go ahead. I'm just north of Canal Street, just a, uh, just a few blocks north of the Trade Tower area. Throngs of people have been, of course, moving north, some of them silent, most of them looking stunned, just saying we're just trying to get out of the area after both towers have collapsed. We're seeing Delta Wing jet fighters circling overhead uh, just one at a time. When the first one appeared, the group of people amid which I was standing uh, shrieked and said, oh my God, there's another attack. And then they realized uh, that being a Delta Wing jet fighter, uh, it was probably the U.S. military, which of course it seems to be. There's just a couple of helicopters, apparently police helicopters circling overhead. And on this very clear morning now, the, the unusual sight is the lack of the trade towers sticking up above the buildings that are normally here. People have now begun to accept, but just barely begun to accept what's happened. All business at a complete standstill, nothing but sirens down here as these throngs move further and further north, just walking away from what they can barely begin to understand. Peter? And, and Bill, how far north did the, did this, I mean, we looked at some streets which debris had just gone in a huge wide area. Right. I seem to be just north of where that hit. Um, I'm just up at Canal, so... Uh, there seem to have been enough low-lying buildings that is no more than, say, 20 or 30 stories high between us and the base of the tower to have protected people here from the debris. Uh, but here's another man walking past me, just, just looking completely dazed, going north, uh, two or three other women. The crowds are beginning to thin out now, as most of the people uh, who were just standing around and watching or working there. One woman came up just talking a mile a minute with her daughter and her friend and her daughter describing how they had gone to their school this morning uh, she was about to go to the trade tower uh, to pick up something from a shop there when her daughter said i want a sandwich mommy and so she stayed back she said otherwise i would have been there they're still trying to understand uh, how they're so lucky not to have been over there uh, there must be thousands of such stories here this morning peter of those that were the lucky ones Thank you, Bill. Please stay in touch as often as you can. It's now 10 minutes to 11 Eastern time, 10 minutes to, to uh, east in, uh, two minutes to eight in, in the west. Uh, and I'm just going to add to the chaos and the trauma of the day by saying that a large plane has now crashed uh, just north, or shouldn't I say just, but crashed about 10 o'clock in the last 50 minutes north of Somerset County Airport uh, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. 
Um, this is, uh, this is um, a reporting from one of the Pittsburgh television stations uh, as a result of a 911 call from the airport itself. There are no other details on this crash yet. Um, and it's not clear whether the crash was related to anything else that has happened in the country today. Uh, but the plane, which was believed to be a Boeing 767, uh, crashed about 8, 10 a.m., uh, just about eight miles uh, east of Jennerston, Pennsylvania. Uh, people in the area will undoubtedly be reporting in more clearly to us on that. Um, the New York mayor's race is having a primary today. Uh, that has now been canceled, uh, both on the Republican and the Democratic uh, side. Uh, there was a, uh, a um, I apologize for interruption. Somebody's trying to say something. Go ahead, please. Okay, just stand by just for one second. Yeah, Fred, pick it up.